Um, when we uh, describe things or even call them in a certain name, sometimes the, it's not their name, it's just the way they look. And this, this can give me a hint which direction to go. Um, if I need to wear my own shoes, I need to open it a little bit, take the tongue out to put my foot inside, correct? So why not let the shoe literally open its mouth and swallow the foot inside and it can stay on the tongue? Like in this case. This is a question I hear a lot. What is it with you and shoes? What is it about? You can create sculptures, you know, drawings, things that people that want to create things do. Much more normal. First, I love it, makes me happy, and it's the best reason to do anything. Uh, the second thing is, uh, I did uh, make some sculpture and fine art things when I was younger in high school, and I loved it, but when I completed the piece, I, I felt that it has its own life. It stays on display, nobody sees it unless they go directly to see fine art in the museum. And it's not part of life. And we choose, I get both. It's fun to create, and it's fun to see it as part of life. We relate to it because it's calling us. We're supposed to wear it. Um, even though there's nobody wear this type of shoes, some, some people do actually, but even in, when we walk in front of windows and we see shoes, we imagine, who wears that? Who wears that? This maybe I will wear. We imagine the character. It's a living sculpture, wearable sculpture. Um, I treat it as another organ that we operate and affects the way we look, because it's changing our post posture, our movement, the whole body silhouette, but um, the body is not hiding behind the costume. We can look differently and still have that effect. Another aspect that's uh, important for me in these designs is that they will be very appealing. They can really call us to, to look at them. We understand the image immediately, so we're drawn into it. And it invite, uh, invite us to participate. All these shoe creatures, as I call them, are completely wearable and real and handmade. No factory will make this for me. They kick me out, obviously. Um, and it's, it's basically communicating with a wide range of people. Kids like it, the parents like it. It uh, relates to different characters. Continue to walk in the street uh, with the sidewalk. I can notice the mother and daughter holding hands. Okay, let's make a shoe. It's very easy to see that, especially when one is a mini version of the other. It can be cute, it can be scary, depends who you see. Uh, they can hold hands, hug, uh, defines the relationship uh, between uh, one another. Um, this can also happen in the street. Right? <laughs> Thank you. But usually, if this is for real, we just curse and try to get rid of it. But if it's taken out, taken out from the original scene, we can maybe laugh. We can get the attention, and not by laughing at us, but what are this person wearing? Um, another action that can be frozen is having coffee. Isn't that exactly what you thought when you had coffee this morning? high heel shoes. Some people do. It's redefined the heel as a, as a very strong pull that needs to carry the body up um, and becoming a fluid that's ripping out gently out from the shoe. This is the same design, it's right here, with the most simple uh, diner looking like coffee pot. Uh, we saw movement that has been frozen. I I really like to take movement and in, interpret it in a still object design. It gives it another. It, it gives it more more life, not just an object. Uh, noticing a stretching cat <coughs> like this in the morning. They have this like very nice expressions. Uh, I just saw that silhouette in that cat perfectly. Just thought, oh, there it is. Went to the, say thank you to the cat and uh, went to back to my computer. Um, all the elegant lines of the cat just created every little detail about this shoe, and it didn't, didn't need to find solution. It, it's all there, even the sole and the top pieces of the heel. Crazy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, animals are a great source of inspiration for me. Beautiful, exciting, different from one another. I see many characters in them. Um, after the cat, uh, I saw a bird in the street again, 
And I noticed this wavy line from the body up the neck to the beak because it was eating something gross from the sidewalk. So I decided to rearrange it as a bird silhouette design. Uh, looking uh, through the web uh, to different bird images, the token is the first one that grabbed my eye with this exaggerated stupid beak that he has to carry with a little bit of smiley expression on its face. So he's the first one, there he is, uh, to become a shoe. But looking at so many different birds that I don't usually see, I couldn't stop at one, so I kept the same design structure and let different birds stylize it. This is the mellow duck. They have metallic, natural metallic feathers on their cheeks. Like this. And a classic swan that a lot of people like. Uh, looking at the birds and the main elements of birds and rearranging them into a shoe can also happen in other images, like this. Um, here, think about the shoe as a shell, as a peel of the foot. I chose bananas, first because it means crazy. Um, and usually a shoe and a banana peel on the floor meeting, we know how it's going to end. So here it merged into one another and become a slip-on shoe. This is the first design that I took a character uh, to make a shoe from. So olive oil, Popeye's girl, is the chosen one. I chose her because we look alike. Um, she has a very simple, iconic look to her um, that is very clear to understand. I spoke about extraction of a shape. Uh, cartoons extract a character. They take the most uh, noticeable thing about that character, exaggerate it, and this is the way we understand them immediately. Good guy, bad guy. We know how to relate to them, and then we can see more meanings into them. This is what icons are about. Uh, they have meanings. They bring a lot of elements with their image. So um, another iconic lady that can become a shoe is Madonna. Um, with her eccentric stage look of the 90s, con bra, mic like mine today, blonde hair. Um, I had to become a mini hairdresser to, to create this one and went to uh, buy a blonde hair extension in a shop. And the sales girl told me, don't you think you're more of like a brunette maybe? <laughs> but whatever, what, I was supposed to say it's for a shoe. It's even worse than saying it's not for me, it's for my friend. So I just like rolled with it and told her I always wanted to be blonde. <laughs> um, so this design is titled Blonde Ambition, but not because of me. It's the true, uh, true name of Madonna in that period of time. This is her most iconic look. I think it's going to haunt her forever. I think it's great. I hope she does too. Uh, Madonna's sexuality fits perfectly to high heel shoes. That's why people buy them, that's why people like them. They're unpractical. They can be comfortable or not, but it's not why we buy them. If somebody buy high heels for shoes, problem is not with the shoes. But um, um, it's basically taking the silhouette, express the sexuality, brings it out. Uh, it's a sex product. So if sexuality, that's what it's about, so we can take another sex product and make a shoe. Um, inflatable sex doll uh, with a suggestive body posture, a mouthpiece on the back, lips pipto, uh, can certainly bring sexuality. Um, in one of my exhibitions, I saw uh, a little girl and her father staring at this together. <laughs> and then they look at one another, and the father was like, <laughs> and then the girl, little girl said, look, dad, it's my Barbie doll. And the dad was like, yes, of course, honey. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I guess he, he thank you. <laughs> I guess he saw the next design, um, not this one. That's why he ran away. Because if this is not sexy enough, we can take a more extreme close up at the same one. Let's see who didn't get it. You notice a person getting it in, in immediately when they notice it. I have to admit that the internet was a great tool 
to look at, to make some visual um, research. Inspiration everywhere. <laughs> yep. There we go. But sex is not the only thing we're shopping for, right? So we can go to the marketplace. Um, this is the very first crazy shoe I made uh, back in college. Um, we were given a theme, the marketplace, go design something. So people like gluing vegetables on the shoes and like don't know what to do, what, what the hell the marketplace has to do with it. I try to think about taking something that says marketplace no matter where it is. So I don't know if these baskets are familiar here. In Israel it's like for ages. And when you see somebody carrying this, it means they're on the way to the market or from the market, depends if there's a chicken inside, so that how you know. Um, also with this one that you saw before. So these were the two uh, first ones that I created 13 years ago. And it's the first time I saw um, the, exp the attention and people's reaction to it in the college exhibition. There were so many shoes, crazy artistic footwear over there, out of this world. And all you can hear people say, did you saw the basket? Did you saw the basket? That's what they saw. And it made me think, and other people think, besides hating me for the attention, um, why this is disconnects more than crazy fairy tale shoes. And that's also the reason I, I create it, because the familiar part makes us uh, communicate and connect more, because we understand it. And it also makes uh, us understand and see the new aspect, because we know some of it, so we see the difference clearly. That's it. Thank you very much.